Hello and good evening students and welcome to today's daily quiz presented to you by Baidu's Exam Prep IES. Before we start the quiz, please note that the target prelims 2023 session for today that is 26th April will be on Indian economy. We will be having the third session on Indian economy starting at 7.30 p.m. for two hours till 9.30 p.m. So do not forget to mark your calendars and attend these sessions to get amazing marks in your prelims prelims exam. So here is our first question. How many of the following statements are true regarding institutes of eminence in India? It is a scheme started by the UGC to develop world-class higher education institutes in India. Only the public sector institutes can get this tag. An institute needs to be in function for at least 10 years before they can get this tag. We have taken this question because there is an article in the Indian Express editorial section that presents a commentary on the current higher education institutes in India that includes the UGC's Institute of Eminence scheme. Now UGC introduced this scheme back in the year 2017. In the budget of 2016, our finance minister talked about this scheme and it was finally introduced by UGC. Now the benefit of getting this tag of Institute of Eminence is that these universities, they have complete control over their curriculum and the course offerings. Plus, they can also recruit foreign faculty up to 25% of their total faculty. They get the ability to collaborate academically with the foreign institutes and can have their own transparent system for admitting students. However, please note that this scheme is for both public as well as private universities. Moreover, there is no criteria regarding the number of years that the university has been in function. In fact, this tag is even proposed for certain greenfield universities that have not yet started their functioning. So out of these, this is a correct statement. Yes, it has been introduced by UGC itself. This and this are incorrect. So our correct answer is A. The next question is, how many of the following cities can never experience the sun directly overhead? Delhi, Chennai, Imphal, Bangalore and Raipur. Now yesterday, Bangalore observed a zero shadow day. The sun was directly overhead in Bangalore and because of that the shadow of anything was not visible. If you were standing in the sun yesterday at 12 17 pm in Bangalore then your shadow would have been directly under you directly under your feet and you would not have been able to see it. Now please note that sun it has a maximum movement between 23 and a half degree north to 23 and a half degree south latitudes. So during summers in North Hemisphere, the sun shifts to the 23 and a half degree north. What does this shift mean? It means that the sun shines overhead at 23 and a half degree north. During the summer in the southern hemisphere, same happens at 23 and a half degree south. So any place that lies beyond these tropics will never experience sun overhead. This is the upper limits of the movement of the sun. During the equinoxes, the sun is directly overhead at the equator. During the summer solstice, it is directly overhead in the northern hemisphere at Tropic of Cancer and during the winter solstice, it is directly overhead at the Tropic of Capricorn. So if you see over here, these are the five cities that have been mentioned. Now take a look at this map. Which of these cities lie north to the Tropic of Cancer? Now these cities are Delhi and Imphal. Now Raipur, Bangalore and Chennai, they lie south to the Tropic of Cancer. So that means they can experience the sun overhead. So out of these, Bangalore, Raipur and Chennai will be incorrect answers and your correct answer will be Delhi and Imphal and that is why A is the correct option. The next question is, identify the correct statements. Quantum computers are a variety of supercomputers used for faster processing. They utilize quantum bits instead of bits and rely on quantum mechanics for their functioning. National Quantum Mission has been approved in India for a duration of 8 years. 
Now we have taken this question because the government of India has recently given a go ahead to the national quantum mission. This national quantum mission will go on between 2023 to 2031. And between these eight years, we will make efforts to make India a pioneer in this field. Now, how does quantum computing differ from general computing? General computers or even supercomputers, they use bits. While the quantum computers, they use the qubits or quantum bits. Now, quantum bits, they have a special property known as superimposition. So, while the simple bit can either be 0 or 1 at one particular point of time, the quantum bits, it can be both 0 and 1. So, a 2-bit system in a conventional computer can have 4 states, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. But these 4 states will be only one at a time. So, to go through each of these four states, the computer has to take four steps. Now, in the quantum computing, the superimposition makes it possible for the quantum bit or the qubit to exist in both zero and one state simultaneously. So, all these four stages, instead of taking suppose four seconds, it will take one second for the quantum computer to stay in these four stages. So that is why quantum computers are going to be extremely fast and they will revolutionize the whole system of computing. So out of these statements, this is incorrect. Quantum computers are not super computers. This however is correct. It relies on quantum mechanics for their function superimposition that we talked about, it is a concept of quantum mechanics. This is also correct. So our correct answer over here is B. Let us now take a look at the next question. Match the following and pick the correct answer from the options below. On the left side, we have the index or the report. And on the right side, we have the agencies. So we have to match which index or report is published by which agency. World Economic Outlook, Ease of Moving Index, Global Competitiveness Report, Global Gender Gap Report, World Economic Forum, OMI Foundation, IMF. So if you know what is the full form of OMI, it is OLA Mobility Institute. So you can clearly know that this index must have been published by OMI because it is about moving which is related to mobility. So you can clearly very easily eliminate these two options. However, let us take a look at further details why we have taken this question because when the monthly review of the economic status of March 2023 was being done, the report World Economic Outlook that is published by IMF, it came into discussion. Now, IMF publishes this report that enumerates the growth and economic prospects of the economies all across the world. Apart from that, in today's paper, the OMI Foundation's Ease of Moving Index was also published, which included responses from 18 cities about how easy or difficult is mobility in those cities in India. So, if you take a look over here, World Economic Outlook is IMF. Ease of Moving Index is OMI Foundation. So these two were eliminated and through just knowing these two, you can easily say that C is the correct option. So Global Competitiveness Report and Global Gender Gap Report, they are both published by World Economic Forum. Next, we come to a PYQ. The demand for Tibaga peasant movement in Bengal was for the reduction of the share of landlords from one half of the crop to one third. The grant of ownership of land to peasants as they were the actual cultivators of the land. The uprooting of Zamindari system and the end of serfdom. Writing off all peasant debts. Now, Tebhaga. Now, many of you, you must have identified that Tebhaga, it actually means a third part. A third part of anything. So that is one third of any particular thing. So Tebhaga peasant movement, it was in Bengal between 1946 to 47. This movement demanded the reduction of the share of landlords from one half of the crop to one third of the crop. The Tebhaga of the crop should go to the landlord and not one half. 
So this is the correct answer. Next we come to the fact of the day which is about the national health accounts estimates 2019-20. Now these estimates they have been released by the union health ministry and the biggest takeaway from this report is that the share of out of pocket expenditures in total health expenditures in India have significantly declined between 2014-15 to 2019-20. So within a span of these five years, the total health expenditure out of the pocket one, it declined by almost 15%. Simultaneously, the health expenditure of the government as a percentage of total GDP, it has also increased from 1.13 in the same duration to 1.35 between 2019 and 2020. Total health expenditure done by the government has also increased. So that shows that this reduction in out of pocket expenditure, it is a direct impact of increase of government expenditure on the health sector. And this proves that this intervention has shown results. Apart from that, it has also been noticed that the share of private health insurance it has also increased in the country. That means that penetration of health insurance, the knowledge about this, it has increased in the country and everyone who's able to afford these kind of insurances, they are taking them. So that is again a very positive aspect about health expenditure in the country. Now we know that the government of India has launched various schemes to assist the citizens of India in their health care. In the comments, can you tell us a few such schemes that have been implemented and the years when they were implemented? So that is all about today's daily quiz. I hope you were able to understand all the concepts. Do not forget to tell us in the comments how many questions were you able to answer correctly. So thank you very much and have a very good day ahead.